Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. As usually, my favorite theorem, so certainly a very biased point of view. Although today it's a little bit special because I'm going to talk about the Brouwer fixed point theorem, which should make it on the top 10 list of a lot of mathematicians. And uh, because it's just, it's just so powerful and so good and so cute and uh, so applicable, it's really, it's really, really, really adorable. Um, and whatever, if you would try to write down a top 10 list for an average mathematician, it should be on it, as I said. And all the other theorems are much older, something like e to the two pi i equals one, compared to Brouwer, which is super old compared to Brouwer fixed point theorem, which is roughly 100 years old by now. Of course, it was formulated before. It's a generalization of something like a, like the intermediate value theorem, which I will show you, which was known a long time before. Um, but in the current form, or with its with the form, well, usually it's a, uh, uh, attributed to Brouwer, who proved it roughly 100 years ago. So let's just say it's 100 years old. And the point is, it will be kind of a generalization of something all of you know that two lines from two different from left to right, I want would like to draw a green line from left to right, and I need to draw a red line from bottom to top. And no matter what I do, as long as those lines are reasonably well behaved, they need to cross whatever I do. And Brouwer's fixed point theorem is just a vast generalization of exactly that. You will see it. So let me start off with a really cute example. So I'm taking a one D one D disk, which is just an interval, A B, whatever minus one, one, whatever you want, uh, into a 1D disk. And that's always a flavor for Brouwer, Brouwer fixed point theorems. They will always map something convex into something convex. And interval is, of course, some, something reasonably closed into something reasonably closed. And the way I do it is I kind of color code my interval. I have a, a darker region that's, that's this point. And it continuously goes into a brighter region. So then it goes a little bit grayish grayish. And then I would like to draw uh, white, but I can't. So let's do yellow. So, and then it gets white. So it's, it's kind of a colored region. And I think of this interval as being colored. And the colors is just a way to encode what kind of point I'm looking at. And I map this into, into itself, just times, times t, so times time, in order to make it more visible. But basically, it, it's mapped into itself. And there will be some marker, and the marker is the fixed point. So in other words, in this description, and that's why I like it so much, so in, in the t direction, I just take the interval and I just still have my, the same color code. Here's black, which you can't see because I'm um, I, I'm now using black to write over black. Um, but anyway, there's a black region, so right here. Um, there's this gray part in the middle, blue, 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 blue. And there's a brighter part, well, a, a white part actually, but it, let's make it yellow, a yellow part is all right. And Brouwer's fixed point theorem in this case states, no matter what I do, I will always have one point of my colored line, which lies uh, on top of a point in the colored background of the same color. And that's exactly the fixed point in this formulation. So let's have a look, uh, let's see it in motion because I have animated it. So let's see it in motion. Okay, here's my animation of the same story. And I have my line, I can move it around as you can see. And again, it's a map from the interval into itself, just nicely illustrated. And this marker always keeps track of points which are of the same color as their corresponding background. Let's 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 do an example for instance. I could drag this white end into the right region. And yay, the fixed point is in the right region. I could drag the black end into the black. There could be more than one fixed point, but at least I get a fixed point somewhere here. Yeah, indeed. And no matter what I do, as you can see, no matter what I do, there will always be a fixed point. And it kind of continuously moves with, with my movement of of, of the line. So I don't know, uh, but I, I think this is pretty a pretty cute illustration of Brouwer's fixed point theorem. There will always be one point which is above another point of the same color. That's exactly the fixed point. 
Okay, so that's a pretty nice example. Another example, all of you know, is the following. So you take some continuous line, uh, a continuous function. So here my f, and Brouwer's fixed point theorem actually grew out by trying to generalize the classical intermediate value theorem, and it's just a, just a very easy formulation. So you map a uh, an interval, so my AB interval, you map it into an interval, into an FAFB interval, which is just, just a shift, basically a scaled copy of AB itself. And there will be a point C, and I need to get rid, rid of the scaling um, to see my fixed point, but there will be a point C such that this line, the line along C, intersects with the graph at a certain point, and this point is x, and this is just saying that f of x equals c. So for any c, this line, the c line here, needs to intersect the graph. And this creates a fixed point. It's just it, it's just uh, another formulation of, of Brouwer's fixed point there. Or it's actually another formulation of the, of the little game I showed you before, that you need to draw lines from the corresponding color to the other side, and they will always cross, right? Brouwer's fixed point theorem, lines will always cross, or at least continuous lines in, in this set. Okay, and there's another variant of Brouwer's fixed point theorem, which is called Spanner's lemma. And it works as follows. So you have a triangle, and you divide it into smaller triangles, as many as you want. So you have my two big triangles here, which I generated randomly using the following rules. So the rules are as follows. So you have three colors. Uh, obviously, I have here green, uh, blue, and red. And you color your, your edges with those colors, and your vertices with those colors, using only two rules. The outside triangle has is, is tricolored. Tricolor. Tricolor means exactly this thing here. So it has any color up here. Middle triangles can be arbitrary. So here you, for example, have a, a red, red, green triangle. Middle colors can be arbitrary. Middle triangles can be arbitrary, but the outside one is tricolored. That's a rule. And you need an additional rule. Um, so along this edge, the only colors you have are red and green along this because they are between the red and green edge uh, vertex outside vertex and here we look along this edge you only have green and blue say rule and along this edge you have red and blue and these are the only rules in the middle you're basically completely arbitrary so here for example is, is a completely black uh, a completely blue triangle so in the middle it's arbitrary and Spanos lemma is not the following game. So you start, um, so you, you have a, one allowed move. You have an edge and you're allowed to cross it if and only if um, the edges are red and green. Okay. And Spanner then asks the following question. If I start, so I will start in this triangle. You can do it in this triangle as well. If I start at the at, at this leftmost edge, which is the only starting point because this is the only, this is my crossing rule, I can only start here. And I go somewhere in the middle and the middle gets random. Will I get always stuck in a tricolor thing in, in such something like this? And the answer is yes, you will always get stuck in this tricolor thing. So let me give you, try to give you an example. So let's say we enter here, oh, this was too fast. We just got stuck right away. Same if you enter here. If I enter here, I can go on. That's very good. I, I can go on and I get stuck again. Ah, very bad. And this, these were the only entering points in this example. So in this example, it works. And of course, because Spanner's lemma says this is always true. And how to create a fixed point from that? Well, you basically want to repeat this process, right? So you now, you, let's say you've taken this pass here. Now you end up again in one of those. And now you can dissect it further and play the same game and kind of converge to a fixed point. So this is Spanner's uh, triangle game, if you want. And the theorem itself is now extremely beautiful. It says the following. So here are a lot of examples. 
of where the theorem applies to. And the theorem is just take any continuous function, which is something like this, right? You don't want to jump something continuous. So the only ingredient here is continuous and you want to have uh, a compact convex set, like an interval, a disk, a triangle, a ball, uh, a filled ball, whatever, a filled cube, whatever, you know, it. anything basically. And the statement is it contains a fixed point. So any map from itself contains a fixed point, which just means you will find a point which where f on x, f of x equals x. And in all of my examples, there was a fixed point, right? This remember this playing game here, there's fixed point of the same color and so on. And you can reformulate the theorem in so many ways. It's just amazing. It's really, really, really amazing. Um, and there's basically no restrictions, like continuous functions. Yeah, basically everything you ever see in life is continuous. Compact convex set, okay, you don't want to have something like, um, like, like this, right? Where, you, where, you just, where, where this, is, this is cut out. That doesn't work. And that's pretty easy to see because you can think of something that just goes around all the time, something like that. Uh, such a map wouldn't have a fixed point. Um, if I would, and uh, if this wouldn't would be here, right? Then the fixed point would be zero, something like zero in the middle. So a rotation map still has a fixed point. It's just zero, just a stupid fixed point. If I take out zero, then the rotation map doesn't have a fixed point anymore. That's that's the other restriction. Uh, but otherwise, that's exactly it, and that's a theorem. It's easy. It's applicable. It's it's amazing. Let me show you another application of, well, not true, but then another nice application of this theorem. So I'll end, I want to end with, with a map from a 2D disk into a 2D disk. In this case, from a rectangle into a rectangle or from a, whatever, a map into a map. So a map is of course just a rectangle and you can map it into its location, which in some sense is also a rectangle. It's a rectangle lying on, on, on the uh, surface of the earth, right? And there is a fixed point. When you're holding the map in your hand, and let's say you the map is showing the location where you're currently at, there will be the you are there might be a you are here marker on let's say Google Maps. Google Maps will tell you, oh yeah, you are here, um, and you have it on your iPhone, right? If you look at your iPhone, you have Google Maps, and Google Maps tells you you are here. That's exactly Bauer's fixed point because there, there is this map from uh, the Google Map, the Google Map map to Google Map. map. Very nice. Uh, uh, the, the map from Google Maps into the location, and that has a fixed point. It has to be, well, there is at least one, and that's the you are here marker, because that's exactly what the you are here marker is for, right? It tells you that this is fixed. Uh, anyway, this is a fun application or kind of application. It's not, not a real application, of course, but it's a kind of uh, a fun instance of Bauer's fixed point. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.